This is Sparta! Amid the rich histories of ancient Greece and Rome, Sparta often lingers in the shadows, only surfacing briefly when connected to Persian battles, Zack Snyder's movies, or the harsh way of life endured by its people. Yet let us not forget that we are speaking of a city-state that flourished for five centuries, reigning not only as the heart of Greece, but also exerting influence over much of the northern Mediterranean. So where did Sparta vanish to? Unlike renowned cities like Athens and Rome, what led to Sparta's utter disappearance from historical records? Sit back, my friends, and allow us to embark on an enlightening journey through time, commencing with a brief historical overview. In modern times, our perception of ancient Greece as a cohesive entity belies the reality of a diverse combination of nationalities, social classes, and renowned Greek city-states. Today, we might liken this amalgamation to something akin to the European Union, where different states coexist while pursuing a common policy. However, it is crucial to understand that the Greek city-states were actually independent entities, vying for influence and connected mainly by geography, culture, and to some extent, religion. The historical landscape witnessed instances where Thebes emerged as a formidable rival to Athens, overshadowing even the Persians. There were also periods when Athens and Thebes formed alliances against Sparta. The annals of ancient Greece are brimming with events, reminding us that the struggles among city-states were primarily fought on the battlefield rather than through political maneuvering. The chronicles of Sparta, much like the broader tapestry of Greek history, trace their roots back to the mythical figure of Zeus. According to legend, Zeus fathered a son named Lacedaemon, who proceeded to establish a state bearing the same name in the southern region of the Peloponnese Peninsula. In homage to his wife, Sparta, Lacedaemon named the capital city after her. Consequently, the residents of Sparta came to be known as Lacedaemonians, and the land itself was often referred to as Lacedaemonia or Laconia. It is important to note that Sparta was not simply a singular city, but rather a vast territory encompassing multiple settlements. The earliest written records documenting the existence of the Spartan state can be traced back to the 9th century BC. Archaeological discoveries provide evidence of an even more ancient past. Nonetheless, it is widely accepted among historians, including renowned scholars like Herodotus and Thucydides, that the true historical narrative of Sparta truly commenced with the rise to power of Lycurgus. Precise dates regarding Lycurgus' era remain elusive, with estimations ranging from the 9th to the 6th century BCE. Notably, the philosopher Aristotle posited that he spotted Lycurgus' name listed among the organizers of the inaugural Olympiad in 776 BC. Lycurgus played a pivotal role in shaping Spartan society. He instituted a system of social classes, authored fundamental laws, and established the bedrock of Sparta's political structure. These significant contributions earned him the epithet of lawgiver. Yet what truly captivates our curiosity is what transpired in Sparta following Lycurgus' reforms. Following their triumph over the shared adversary, Persia, in 449 BCE, Greece embarked on a familiar pursuit for dominance within the region. Positioned in one corner of the proverbial ring stood democratic Athens, representing the Ionians. In the opposing corner resided oligarchic Sparta, championing the Dorians. It is essential, however, to refrain from succumbing to preconceived notions. This conflict was not a mere clash between two cities with a limited number of hoplites engaging in close combat. Instead, it was a full-scale confrontation between two formidable nations. Both Athens and Sparta had established their own independent states, comprising allies, vassals, and sympathizers. Both Athens and Sparta boasted formidable naval fleets. For instance, the sea battle at Egospotomy in 405 BCE witnessed the participation of 300 ships from each side. This staggering number of vessels is comparable to the battle at Cape Actium in 31 BCE between Mark Antony and Octavian Augustus. The magnitude and scale of the ongoing conflict between Athens and Sparta were undeniably serious. 
In the end, Sparta emerged triumphant after the prolonged Peloponnesian War, which endured for nearly three decades. It is undeniably ironic that when one delves into articles discussing the downfall of Sparta, it generally highlights the flaws of oligarchy, the concentration of power within a minority, and the exploitation of slaves, while the upper class deteriorated. However, the true irony lies in the fact that these reasons closely mirrored the very factors that led to Athens' defeat in the Peloponnesian War. Athens, not Sparta, relentlessly exploited its vassals. While its democratic system consolidated power in the hands of a select few, alienating the rest of the population. Subsequently, Athens found itself isolated and opposed by various city-states, ranging from Thebes to Sicily. In contrast, Sparta gained favor among many polis throughout the war, as Athens drained their resources. What adds to the irony is the fact that Sparta's victory in the Peloponnesian War ultimately paved the path to its own demise. Amidst the intricate dynamics of Greek kingdoms, a third force emerged, Persia. By this point, the Persian king no longer sought military conquest in Greece, shifting instead to financial intervention throughout the Thirty Years of Conflict, perpetuating the cycle of destruction. Persia primarily lent its support to Sparta, foreseeing its eventual triumph. An extraordinary example of this is the reconstruction of Sparta's fleet, which was initially lacking at the start of the conflict. Thucydides, a contemporary witness to the events, adeptly captures the intricacies of the mind games played during the Peloponnesian War. Initially, both Sparta and Athens adhered to the unwritten rules of warfare, but as time passed, escalation shattered all cultural, religious, and moral restraints. In this unraveling lies the root cause not only of Sparta's downfall, but also the decline of what we now know as ancient Greece. The aftermath of the war left the country's territory in ruins. Athens, once a thriving city, lay completely devastated. Sparta, too, became beholden to Persian financial support, shackled by its obligations to the lender. Other cities, like Corinth and Argos, suffered impoverishment and felt no sense of victory. Of notable significance is Thebes, which, with Persian assistance in the wake of its triumph over Athens, dared to declare war on its former suzerain Sparta. For a brief period, Thebes stood as the leading city of Greece until Persia once again intervened, coming to Sparta's aid. This compelled Thebes to capitulate and accept the humiliating terms of the Peace of Antalcidas in 387 BC, effectively granting the Persian king supreme authority over Greece. The Spartans emerged victorious, but in reality, they merely enforced the Persian king's decision. If you had suspected that the entire conflict was advantageous for Persia, your intuition was correct. Increasingly, historians are referring to the Peloponnesian War as the definitive end of ancient Greece's history. This devastating war shattered the intricate system of city-states, polis, disrupted domestic and international relations, and thrust the country into unrelenting chaos from which it struggled to recover. Following the conquest by Macedonia in 337 BC, Alexander the Great emerged and brought a definitive end to the Greek predicament, punishing both the Greeks and their manipulators, the Persians, by uniting all parties involved into a vast empire. However, after his demise, none of the Greek city-states possessed the strength required to assert dominion in the region, leaving Greece powerless and fragmented. The contrast between the survival of Athens until the present day and the reduced state of Sparta, transformed into a small town of 16,000 inhabitants with no connection to its ancient polis, can be attributed to simple factors of geography and economics. Athens, situated at the strategic intersection of sea routes, possessed a strong trading tradition and a formidable fleet, regardless of its political system. Throughout history, Athens thrived as a bustling trading city, benefiting from its advantageous location. Despite the loss of its former political influence following the civil wars and the destruction of ancient Greece, Athens managed to regain its economic vitality and prosperity. On the other hand, Sparta, nestled in the remote Peloponnesus region, 
solely relied on its prowess and warfare to sustain its existence. Following the devastation caused by the internal strife in ancient Greece, Athens was able to resume its trading activities, while Sparta faced a different predicament. Efforts were made to resurrect the Peloponnesian Union, and there was even a rebellion against Alexander the Great. At a certain point in the 3rd century BC, Sparta even experienced a brief renaissance. However, the limited options and geographical disadvantages hindered Sparta's ability to rebound in the same way as Athens. The absence of a thriving trade network and the lack of access to sea routes limited the opportunities for economic growth and resurgence. Consequently, Athens soared to a renewed state of wealth and prosperity, while Sparta struggled to regain its former status, ultimately diminishing in size and influence over time. In 229 BC, Cleomenes III emerged victorious and conquered the Peloponnesus, boldly implementing radical reforms that aimed to revive the traditional Spartan way of life. However, despite his efforts, the era of Sparta as a powerful city-state had already passed. The subsequent decline of Sparta culminated in 195 BC when a coalition of Greek cities, backed by the growing might of Rome, dealt a decisive blow to Sparta, relegating it to a mere Greek community. It is worth noting that, even in this conflict, the indomitable Lacedaemonians managed to assemble an army of 30,000 valiant warriors and valiantly resisted until the bitter end. Even when the Romans laid siege to Sparta itself, the descendants of Leonidas remained steadfast and resolute, refusing to surrender. Then, in 146 BC, Rome achieved what Persia had once failed to accomplish, seizing the opportunity presented by the long-standing civil wars in Greece. Rome completely subjugated Sparta, transforming it into a province under its dominion. The relentless series of civil conflicts that plagued Greece for centuries provided Rome with the ideal opening to conquer Sparta and consolidate its control over the region. Although Sparta held out resolutely until the last moments, the overwhelming might of Rome ultimately sealed its fate, forever altering the destiny of this once mighty city-state. Contrary to prevailing notions, the historical trajectory of Sparta did not culminate at its apparent demise. Alongside Thebes, this resilient city was bestowed with self-governance as a tribute to its past achievements. Notably, records indicate that as early as 161 BC, 500 valiant Spartans stood among the ranks of Marcus Aurelius' army during the arduous Parthian campaign. Furthermore, there is evidence of a 12-kilometer aqueduct being constructed within Sparta, leading one to question its purpose within a dwindling, sparsely inhabited city. Even in the annals of the 4th century, glimpses of Sparta can be found amidst the roster of esteemed Roman academies. Regrettably, subsequent accounts concerning the fate of Sparta become shrouded in ambiguity. Yet their importance may be negligible, for the essence of Sparta in its classical sense, ceased to exist at least since 146 BC, the illustrious city, renowned for its unwavering resolve, was forever transformed, its spirit eclipsed by the passage of time and the weight of historical events. Nevertheless, faint echoes of Sparta's enduring influence persist, testifying to its remarkable legacy. Though the precise nature and significance of these fragments may remain elusive, they contribute to the ongoing discourse surrounding the nuanced history of Sparta, offering fleeting glimpses into its evolving narrative long after its former splendor had faded into whispers. In conclusion, it is crucial to recognize that the class divisions, the decimation of the male population due to warfare and various other factors, often cited as the causes behind Sparta's downfall, are merely byproducts of a larger predicament. This predicament is none other than the Peloponnesian War, which not only brought about Sparta's decline, but also cast a shadow of deterioration over the entirety of Greece. While Sparta, the warlike city, grappled with numerous internal issues, it was the deftly executed Persian gambit that dealt the fatal blow, relegating all of Hellas to a secondary role in history. Certainly, this brief summary offers a glimpse into the events that precipitated Sparta's decline. 
However, a comprehensive analysis of these complexities would require more than a single video. Nonetheless, I aim to highlight the primary reasons that led to the melancholic consequences faced by Sparta. If you found this video informative, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and stay in touch for future updates.